On the Olympic stage, break dancers leap into the air and freeze in midair. This seemingly light movement is actually the result of precise coordination of hundreds of muscles and joints throughout the body. How exactly does our brain, in a split second, select and perfectly execute the optimal solution from countless possible movements? Initially, we tried to understand ourselves in the most intuitive way. In the 17th century, Descartes viewed human body as a sophisticated hydraulic machine. He believed that our actions, such as pulling a hand back from fire, were merely a series of reflexes, as simple as pulling a string to make a puppet raise its hand. This theory dominated our understanding of movement for nearly 300 years, yet it could never explain a simple fact. Why can we walk so smoothly? Does every step we take require a sensory signal from our feet to trigger the next step? Until the early 20th century, a stunning experiment changed our inherent understanding of motor control. Scientists Sherrington and others discovered that even with the brain removed, a cat's spinal cord can still control its legs to walk alternately. This discovery introduced a new concept. The brain, as the CEO, doesn't need to personally direct every muscle. It only needs to issue the macro-level command to start walking. The specific execution details are left to a built-in automatic program in the spinal cord. This sophisticated mechanism, like an efficient branch office, can automatically handle all the details of walking. From this, we know that the brain was freed from tedious daily commands, but this liberation brings new challenges. In the roaring factories of the Soviet Union in the 1920s, neurophysiologist Nikolai Bernstein observed workers swinging hammers. He realized that the brain was not facing a simple command problem, but a problem of choice. Our bodies have nearly a thousand muscles and hundreds of joints. Even to complete a simple hammer swing, there are thousands of combinations. And for every elegant dance spin, the dancer needs to select the optimal muscle coordination from countless possibilities within one over one hundredth of a second. This is the degrees of freedom problem that puzzled scientists for years. Bernstein thus proposed that movement is not a rigid command issued by the brain, but a continuous and intelligent dialogue between the brain, body, and environment. With each turn, the dancer receives real-time feedback from muscles, joints, and the vestibular system, and adjusts the next movement accordingly. His theories were dismissed as idealism at the time because they were too advanced, and were only adopted as gospel by the Western world after his death. It was Bernstein's theory that allowed us to re-examine the beautiful misnomer, muscle memory. In reality, muscles themselves don't have memory. It's the brain that learns how to solve the problem of degrees of freedom more efficiently. When watching Michael Jackson's moonwalk, the seemingly casual gliding requires the brain to simultaneously coordinate the precise movements of dozens of joints, including the ankles, knees, and hips. Each joint has countless possible movements, and the brain must find the optimal combination in an instant. When you first try the moonwalk, your cerebral cortex is like a frantically trying CEO, processing massive amounts of information. How to move your feet, when to bend your knees, how to shift your weight. The result is stiff movements, disordered gait, and a complete lack of smoothness. But millions of repetitions essentially upgrade the nervous system. Through practice, the neural pathways responsible for transmitting commands are paved into a dedicated highway, making signal transmission smooth and precise. Once you master the moonwalk, the cerebral cortex no longer controls it, but delegates control to the basal ganglia and cerebellum, the automatic processing centers. These centers, like a well-coordinated team, readily access the repeatedly refined movement program. This is the essence of muscle memory. The brain packages and outsources a complex motor task that requires conscious participation to an efficient, unconscious, automated script. Thus, you too can effortlessly perform those dreamlike steps, just like Michael Jackson. This seemingly effortless, unconscious elegance conceals a more sophisticated neural mechanism, prediction. Our brain is an excellent predictor. Since the 1990s, predictive processing theory, advanced by Carl Friston and others, has revealed the core mechanism. The brain is essentially a powerful predictive machine. It constantly generates predictions about the feeling input of the next moment,
based on our past experiences. The reason why a skilled dancer can dance gracefully is because she has built an extremely accurate predictive model for each dance step through thousands of practices. When she is about to leap, the brain issues more than just a jump command. It also simulates the muscle stretching sensation, the body's balance in the air, and the pressure on the soles of the feet upon landing based on the experience of countless successful jumps in the past. When the actual sensation closely matches the prediction, everything flows smoothly. But if the floor suddenly slips, creating an unexpected sensation, the brain sees this as a prediction error. At this moment, her sophisticated internal model immediately activates, calculating a fine-tuning plan within a fraction of a second to stabilize her posture and maintain her elegance. This dance between the brain and body ultimately extends to our interactions with others. In 1992, Giacomo Rizzolatti's team, in a monkey experiment, first discovered mirror neurons. When we watch dancers perform, the brain regions responsible for performing similar movements are activated. Watching a dance, you're not just analyzing rationally, but using your motor system to empathize with the movements. It's a neural resonance. That is why the high level of synchronization in group dance is so breathtaking. Why can a beautiful dance give us goosebumps? Because our brains connect us silently. Dance is the life force that emerges from the harmonious dance of brain and body. We possess a sophisticated brain, yet inhabit a fragile body. It get tired and injured after practice. But when music starts, it still lose itself in rhythm, expressing life's most primal desires. To break free from constraints, to express oneself, to touch beauty, to meet another soul. The true essence of sports science isn't just about higher, faster, stronger. It's also about enabling ordinary person to find the courage combat mediocrity.